Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, welcome, world changers. Great to see you here. We're going to be reading Ezekiel chapter 21 through 24 tonight. And you know, uh, last night, um, my apologies, what happened was there was a power outage. And I did post uh, on the community post in YouTube, on YouTube, uh, about uh, there was a power outage. It happened about maybe 20 after 6 um, Eastern time last night. And uh, I thought, you know, well, anyways, uh, we're here tonight. So praise God. Very, very, uh, very rarely do we ever uh, miss a night, but we, we did last night. So um, welcome to everyone. Welcome to everyone. And so let's see what we have here in the live chat. We have Calamento says, uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, Laura says, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Billy says, Shalom. All right. And Laura says, are yard sales out on Saturday? I just may have to backslide. You know, yeah, you know, it says in the it says in the scriptures not to buy and sell on the Sabbath, so that that would that would uh, that would be out. Um, you know what? It's 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 really the culture, right? It's the culture. I um, it's been a while since I've been to a Jewish uh, what do you call it? A Jewish area of a major metropolitan city, but if you go there, I'm sure they would not have any. <laughs> I'm not sure if you have any. Um, access to something like that but um uh they would not have any kind of sales at all uh, actually on uh in a jewish culture they actually shut down early on friday and open up uh late on on sunday if if at all so yeah that's 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 one thing about that um See what else here we have. Vinny says Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, Vinny. Alan says Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Still preparing here. Shabbat Shalom, Alan. Welcome, welcome. Bibi says Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, Bibi. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. And question for move says Shalom. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you, brother. And Jerome says Shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. As always, it is my prayer that uh, that what we read and what we what we share tonight would be a great blessing to you. That uh, that God would open up our eyes, our understanding, and just bless us. You know, I I I said this a lot in my pre recorded videos. You know, a couple years ago, but. Uh, you know, it says in Jeremiah, we went through all of Jeremiah just recently. It says in Jeremiah, call unto me. God said, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things, great and mighty things. So tonight within our hearts, that's call unto God and uh, and let him, if he will, show us great and mighty things through, his, through the scriptures, uh, you know, between each other. And so, yeah, I am, it's been a couple weeks, actually, it's been, a, it's been a little while since we've been having, um, uh, special guests on, but I just want to let you guys know that I am working on it, right? So I am working on it and, uh, it is really in my, it is really in my, um, in my mind at least. And I really would like to do, uh, a real, um, a little bit of changes, let me say, around here. Not 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 bad changes. Really good th changes, such as, for example, some of the early uh, the live the live music that we have before uh, these live streams, which Hannah so graciously uh, does for us live every single night, pretty much. And uh, so, I, I, it's on my heart to actually. Um, to actually have more live music, as in not just Hannah, but others as well. Um, and even perhaps even a, a, a music, a whole band per se, uh, several musical instruments and, uh, and, and singing and uh, praising God uh, before um, 
the live stream. Now, I'm not sure if, if that would be able to happen every single night, um, but at least, you know, uh, once or twice, as many times as possible, uh, uh, you know, during the week for sure. And also getting some more, um, some more special guests, as I mentioned there. So yeah, really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, if you guys, if you guys want to pray about it, then pray that, uh, that, uh, the Lord's will would be done and, uh, you know, make a way. It's, it's just that, um, one of the things is, it's just, uh, time, you know, I, it, I, I it, extremely here, I am just stumbling over my words, but just extremely busy, um, my offline life, you know, and then trying to put everything together and then, uh, you know, have all this stuff. So it's just, uh, it's just a matter of, of, uh, time, just making the time and, and that kind of thing. So, but we want to, we want to, uh, see all of that happen, come to fruition so that it's, it's like, uh, taking it up another level, taking it up another level, basically. So, um, Okay. Question here from Jerome says, what can we do to stay on the straight and narrow path aside from prayer and reading the Bible as believers in a world full of evil? Is there anything more that can be done to grow in faith? Um, choosing your friends wisely, drawing close to those who are really good for uh, for, for your faith, for to grow in faith and the knowledge of the Lord and also, uh, holding and, you know, basically arms length, arms distance, so to speak, um, to others. You know, I, I think that a lot of times it is our relationship with worldly people, uh, that really kind of hinder, um, our walk with God. Now I'm not saying not to have, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, the kind of relationship that we have right? and, and the, um, to the amount of time we spend, you know, to really, to really, uh, uh, love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and, and to love him so much that, uh, you know, we want to spend more and more time thinking of, of the things of God, and of the scriptures and all that kind of thing. It is, um, yeah, and I know you mentioned prayer and stuff, you know, aside from prayer, but uh, some of the things you can pray about can make a difference too, like prayer for strength and um, prayer for boldness to stand out. And yeah, I mean... Uh, as it says in the scripture, as uh, you know, as as David said to God Himself, "Your Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against You." So that's just that's part of being uh, staying on the straight and narrow, you know, keeping our mind in the right place and uh, and asking God for wisdom and looking at things from from a long term or even eternal perspective. Yeah. It's, it's really, you know, it starts in the heart and, uh, we just need to, we just need to, to, um, to realize that very good question, Jerome, Jerome, thank you for asking. Yeah. Jerome says, I am surrounded by. By worldly people all the time, it can be dif difficult to stay faithful. I'm still learning how to deal with those of the world. Yeah, uh, that's that's really a big thing. It's a, it's really a big thing to just to learn where that's where that spot is, fi figuratively speaking. You know where that spot is to that that sweet spot with God where you can be amongst them but not of them not really partaking in the things that they partake in uh you have to have you have to um there has to be a a distance maybe not physical distance but there has to be a distance uh to to be and that that's really what being holy is all about you know be whole as God said be holy as I am holy and the word holy means, you know, separate, set apart, 
you know, not like the others. And so in order to be holy, we have to come out from among them. And I know that doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean literally or physically coming out from among them because we can't do that. Um, but to, to come out from among the worldly people in the way we think, in the way we behave, you know, spiritually speaking, that's, it's, it, it definitely is, um, it definitely is a, a major part of it for sure. Tammy says, Shalom all, Shalom Tammy, good to see you, welcome. Question for move, is the kingdom of God a person? I wouldn't call the kingdom of God a person. Uh, as as opposed to, well, I, I mean, the kingdom of God is all about a person. Uh, I would say the kingdom of God is to, is the, um, I'm trying to think of the right word here, is to allow that person to take full, um, to take full, basically full control of, of your life. You know, to surrender to that person and uh, and to experience, you know. So there's the person, of course, as I know you're, you know, you're referring to. But um, the kingdom of God would be the experience of not just that person, but everything about that person, right? Everything about God, the kingdom of God, everything, uh, his power, his glory, um, his peace, like everything about him, not necessarily him in and of it, in and of himself, but if you know what I mean, very good question. Question for move. Jerome says, thank you, sir. Pray for me, please. The devil is on the offense because I seek to wake those who are asleep. Well, you know what? Let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. And by the way, anybody else with prayer requests, feel free to enter them into the live chat and we will pray for them. We'll pray for you. Okay, so Father, we bless you. We thank you again, Father, for just this wonderful opportunity to meet together and uh, and that you've blessed us with this with this fellowship and and how that you have you have brought us to this place. Father, you are you are holy. You are glorious. You are beautiful. You are the great and awesome God. And Father, we ask that you would give Jerome boldness and wisdom and direction, peace in his heart, in his mind, strength from God, that he would be able to walk in righteousness that he would be holy, Father, as you are holy. In the name of Yeshua of Nazareth, and everyone said, Amen, Amen. The Tower Time, the Tower Time says, Shalom and howdy, brothers and sisters, bless y'all. Shalom and blessings multiplied back to you, brother. Alan, C-O-O-H-M-P, come out of her, my people. Wow, that's an awesome call. Awesome call. Question for move says, I've heard that the kingdom, I heard the kingdom is in us or that the kingdom of God is near. And this is a, this is like, um, is one of these things when it comes to interpretation, like in the Tanakh, for example, in the days of Moses, where it says in the books of Moses, that the Lord is um, like, the Lord is among you. Okay. Um, in the Hebrew, I've heard that Actually, I heard this from a Hebrew, a very, um, excuse me, a very well-versed Hebrew um, Messianic rabbi. 
He said that word in Hebrew uh, can, again, can literally mean in you, where it says the, the God is among you, God is in your midst. It can actually mean in you as well. So, I mean, uh, when it comes to the spiritual things of God, it, I mean, whether God or the kingdom of God is near us as, you know, like right up against us or in us, it really doesn't make it much, it, it, whether it's on the skin or under the skin, it doesn't really make a difference. Okay. It, in the spirit. Uh, the, the main thing is that you are, uh, that you experience the kingdom of God. You experience God. That's, that's really what it's all about. Thank you. Question for move. Laura says, like Jesus possessed, yeah. His word's not mine, yeah. And Mark says, shalom. Shalom, Mark. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. One thing, when it, when it, when it comes to the kingdom of God, just before we jump into the scriptures, this is something we should keep in the back of our minds. So in the Gospels, we have, you know, this kind of mysterious saying of Yeshua when he said, um, you know, not all of you uh, here will will die before you see the, the, the kingdom of God coming in power, okay? And some people interpret that to say that there, that there, you know, there's some people that live and they'll never die until the kingdom of God comes. But they don't understand that in the very next chapter, the kingdom of God came. Because in the, in the very next chapter was the, uh, the Mount of Transfiguration experience. So that right there was, quote unquote, the kingdom of God coming to those few disciples that he was referring to in the chapter before. The kingdom of God meaning that you experience God in a way just like how Peter, James, John, and Jesus, Yeshua himself experienced God on the, on, on the Mount of Transfiguration, where you have this wonderful experience with God, this vision of God, where he just over overwhelms you and you like Peter, you may want to just, I know how, I know, I know how it feels. It's like you want to stay there forever. The power, the glory, the beauty, the peace is just literally out of this world. Okay. It, the, it's just absolutely indescribable and not even worthy to be compared in any way with any of the beauty or the pleasures of this world or the riches of this world, as it says in Hebrews, when it, when, uh, it says that Moses chose the reproach of Christ over the riches of this world. There's another thing there that, I mean, according to Hebrews, we have Moses knowing Christ how many? 1,500 years before Christ was born. Right? Because Moses chose the reproach of Christ. Not only did Moses know the, know, know the Christ and the Messiah, but he knew him well enough to choose. He knew him well enough um, to know that he is more of more value than, than the riches of Egypt. So it's, it's just amazing. Yeah, amen. So let us get into Ezekiel chapter 21 through 24. Okay, so I'm reading again from the World English Bible, the W-E-B, okay, from ebible.org. That's what I'm reading from. So this is Ezekiel chapter 21. And again, let me just make it clear, um, you know, I, I, you guys know that, uh, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a, you know, 
I don't I don't dislike using the the pronunciation of Yahweh. I don't really dislike it per se. Although I I actually would prefer Yahuwah or just even the Lord before, but um, but I you know just because this is the way it is transliterated in the World English Bible, I'm going to read it as such. And uh, one of the main things that one of the actually the main reason why I have uh, read from the World English Bible most of the Bible readings that I've done in the past was from the World English Bible. It's just simply because of the copyright issues. That's all. So, Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 1. Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, set your face toward Jerusalem and preach toward the sanctuaries and prophesy against the land of Israel. Tell the land of Israel, Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, and I will dr- and will draw my sword out of its sheath, and will cut off from you the righteous and the wicked. Seeing then that I will cut off from you the righteous and the wicked, therefore my sword will go out of its sheath against all flesh from the south to the north. All flesh will know that I, Yahweh, have drawn my sword out of its sheath. It will not return any more. Sigh, you son of man. You shall sigh before their eyes with a broken heart and with bitterness. It shall be when they ask you, why do you sigh, that you shall say, because of the news, for it comes. Every heart will melt and hands will be feeble. Every spirit will faint and all knees will be weak as water. Behold, it comes and it shall be done, says the Lord Yahweh. Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, prophesize and say, Yahweh says, a sword, a sword. It is sharpened and also polished. Excuse me. It it is sharpened that it may make a slaughter and it is polished that it may be as lightning. We should, or should we then make mirth? The rod of my son condemns condemns every tree. It is given to be polished, that it may be handled. The sword is sharpened. Yes, it is, it is polished to give it into the hand of the killer. Cry and wail, son of man, It is on my people. It is on all the princes of Israel. They are delivered over the sword with my people. Therefore, beat your thigh. For there is a trial. What if even the rod that condemns will be no more, says the Lord Yahweh? You, therefore, son of man, prophesy and strike your hands together. Let the sword be doubled the third time. The sword of the fatally wounded. It is the sword of the great of the great one who is fatally wounded, which enters into their rooms. I have set the threatening sword against all their gates, that their heart may melt and their stumblings be multiplied. Ah, it is made as lightning. It is pointed for slaughter. Gather yourselves together. Go to the right. Say Set yourselves in array. Go to the left. Wherever your face is set, I will also strike my hands together and I will cause my wrath to rest. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Yahweh's word came to me again, saying, Also you, son of man, appoint two ways that the sword of the king of Babylon may come. They both will come out of one land and mark out, mark out a place. Mark it out at the head of the way to the city. You shall appoint a way for the sword to come to, to Rabbah of the children of Ammon and to Judah in Jerusalem, the fortified. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way at the head of the two ways to use divination. He shook the arrows back and forth. He consulted the teraphim. Teraphim in the footnotes. 
and teraphim were household idols that may have been associated with inheritance rights to, to the household property. He looked in the liver. In his right hand was the lot for Jerusalem to set battering rams, to open the mouth lauder, to lift up the voice with shouting, to set battering rams against the gates, to cast up mounds, and to build forts. It will be to them as a false divination in their sight, and have and have sworn oaths to them. But he brings iniquity to memory, that they may be taken. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Because you have caused your iniquity to be remembered, in that your transgressions are uncovered, so that in all your doings your sins appear, because you have come to memory, you will be taken with the hand. You, deadly wounded wicked one, the prince of Israel, whose day has come in the time of the iniquity of, of the end. Lord Yahweh says, remove the turban and take off the crown. This will not be as it was. Exalt that which is low and humble that which is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. This also will be no more until he comes whose right it, it is. And I it. You, son of man, prophesy and say, The Lord Yahweh says this concerning the children of Ammon and concerning their reproach, a sword. A sword is drawn. It is polished for the slaughter to cause, to, to cause it to devour, that it, that it may be lightning. While they see for you false visions, while they divine lies to you, to lay you on the necks of the wicked who are deadly wounded, whose day has come in the time of the iniquity of the end, cause it to return into its sheath. In the place where you were created, in the land of your birth, I will judge you. I will pour out my indignation on you. I will blow on you with the fire of my wrath. I will deliver you into the hand of brutish men, skillful to destroy. For you will be fuel to the fire. Your blood will be in the middle of the land. You will be remembered no more, for I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Ezekiel chapter 22. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me saying, You, son of man, will you judge? Will you judge the bloody city? Then cause her to know all her abominations. You shall say, the Lord Yahweh says, A city that sheds blood within herself, that her time may come, and that makes idols against herself to defile her. You have become guilty in your blood that you have shed, and are defiled in your idols which you have made. You have caused your days to draw near, and have come to the end of your years. Therefore, I have made you a reproach to the nations and a mocking to all the countries. Those who are near and those who are far from you will mock you, you infamous one, full of tumult. Behold, the princes of Israel, everyone according to his power, have been in you to shed blood. In you have they treated father and mother with contempt. Contempt, in the, in the notes here, literally made, made light of father and mother. Among you they have oppressed the foreigner. In you they have wronged the fatherless and the widow. You have despised my holy things and have profaned my Sabbaths. Slanderous men have been in you to shed blood. In you they have eaten on the mountains. They have committed lewdness among you. In you have they uncovered their father's nakedness. In you have they humbled her who was unclean in her impurity. One has committed abomination with his neighbor's wife, and another has lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law. Another in you has humbled his sister, father's daughter. In you have they taken bribes to shed blood. You have taken interest and increase, and you have greedily gained of your neighbors by oppression. 
and have forgotten me, says the Lord Yahweh. Behold, therefore, I have struck my hand at your dishonest gain, which you have made, and at the blood which you have shed within you. Can your heart endure, or can your hands be strong in the days that I will deal with you? I, Yahweh, have spoken it, and and will do it. I will scatter you among the nations and disperse you through the countries. I will purge your filthy out of you. You will be profaned in yourself in that in the sight of the nations. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are bronze, tin, iron, and lead in the middle of the furnace. They are the dross of silver. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Because you have all become dross, therefore, behold, I will gather you into into the midst of Jerusalem, as they gather silver, bronze, iron, and lead, lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire on it, to melt it, so I will gather you in my anger, in my wrath, and I will lay you there and melt you. Yes, I will gather you and blow on you with the fire of my wrath. You will be melted in the middle of it. As silver is melted in the middle of the furnace, so you will be melted in the middle of it. And you will know that I, Yahweh, have poured out my wrath on you. Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, tell her. You are a land that is not cleansed nor rained on in the, excuse me nor rained on in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of of her prophets within it, like a roaring lion re, uh, ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They take treasure and precious things. They have made many widows within it. Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and the common. Neither have they caused men to discern between the unclean and the clean. Sounds like church today, doesn't it? And have hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths. So I am profaned among them. Her princes within it are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls that they may get dishonest gain. Her prophets have plastered for them with, excuse me, yeah, her prophets have plastered for them with whitewashed, seeing false visions and divining lies to them, saying, The Lord Yahweh says, when Yahweh has not spoken, The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery. Yes, they have troubled the poor and needy and have oppressed the foreigner wrongfully. I sought for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before before me for the land that I would not destroy it, but I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. I have brought on their their own way, excuse me, I have brought their own way on their heads, says the Lord Yahweh. Ezekiel 23. Yahweh's word came to me, came again to me, saying, Son of man, there were two women in the, in the daughters of one mother. They played the prostitute in Egypt. They played the prostitute in their youth. Their breasts were fondled there, and their young, youthful nips were caressed there. Excuse me, their youthful nipples were caressed there. Their names were Ohala, the elder, and Ohaliba, her sister. They became mine, and they bought sons and daughters. As for their names, Samaria is Ohala, and Jerusalem is Ohaliba. Ohala played the prostitute when she was mine. She doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors, who were clothed with blue governors and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. She gave herself as a prostitute to them, all of them the choicest 
men of Assyria. She defiled herself with the idols of whoever she lusted after. She hasn't left her prostitution since leaving Egypt. For in her youth, they, they lay with her. They caressed her youthful nipples and they poured out their prostitution on her. Therefore, I delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians on whom she doted. These uncovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters and they killed her with the sword. They became a byword among women for they executed judgments on her. Her sister, Ohaliba, saw this, yet she was more corrupt in her lusting than she, and in her prostitution, which was more depraved than the prostitution of her sister. She lusted after the Assyrians, governors and rulers, her neighbors, clothed, with, clothed more gorgeously, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. I saw that she was defiled. They both went the same way. She increased her prostitution, for she saw men portrayed on the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with red, dressed with belts on their waists, with flowing turbans on their heads, all of them looking like princes, after the likeness of the Babylonians in Chaldee, the land of their birth. As soon as she saw them, she lusted after them and sent messengers to them into Chaldee. The Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their prostitution. She was polluted with them, and her soul was alienated from them. So she uncovered her prostitution and uncovered her nakedness. Then my soul was alienated from her, just like my soul was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied her prostitution remembering the days of her youth in which she played the prostitute in the land of Egypt. She lusted after their lovers, whose flesh is as the flesh of donkeys, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus you called to memory the goodness of your youth in the caressing of your nipples by the Egyptians because of your youthful breasts. Therefore, O Haliba, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will raise up your lovers against you, from whom your soul is alienated, and I will bring them against you. On the, Bab the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, Pekod, Shoah, Koah, and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable young men, governors and rulers, princes and men of renown, all of them on horses. They will come against you with weapons, chariots, and wagons. And with a company of peoples, they will set themselves against you with buckler, shield, helmet all around. I will commit the judgment to them. They will judge you according to their judgments. I will set my jealousy against you, and they will deal with you in fury. They will take away your, your and your ears. Your remnant will fall by the sword. They will take your sons and your daughters and the rest of you will be devoured by the fire. They will also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewels. That thus I will, I will make your lewdness to cease from you and remove your prostitution from the land of Egypt so that you will not lift up your eyes to them nor remember Egypt anymore. For the Lord, for the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will deliver you into the hand of them whom you hate, into the hand of them from whom your soul is alienated. They will deal with you in hatred and will take away all your labor and will leave you naked and bare. The nakedness of your prostitution will be uncovered, both your lewdness and your prostitution. These things will be done to you because you have played the prostitute after the nations and because you are polluted with their idols. You have in the way of your sister, therefore I will give her cup into your hand. The Lord Yahweh says, You will drink of your sister's cup, which is deep and large. You will be ridiculed and held in derision. It contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation 
with the cup of your sister Samaria. You will drink it, you will even drink it and drain it out. You will gnaw the broken pieces of it. You will tear your breasts, for I have spoken it, says the Lord Yahweh. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back, therefore you will bear your lewdness and your prostitution. Yahweh said, moreover to me, son of man, will you judge Ohala and Ohaliba? Then declare to them their abominations, for they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands. They have committed adult idols and have also caused their sons whom they bore to me to pass through the fire to them to be devoured. Moreover, this they have done to me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they have slain, excuse me, for when they slain, for when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came to the same, then they, excuse me, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And behold, they have done this in the middle of my house. Moreover, excuse me, furthermore, you sisters have sent uh, for men who have come from, who come from far away to whom a messenger was sent. And behold, they came for whom you washed yourself, painted your eyes, decorated yourself with ornaments, and sat on a stately bed with a table prepared for it before it. Whereupon you set my incense and my oil. The voice of a multitude being at ease was with her. With, with men of the common sort were brought drunkards from the wilderness, and they put bracelets on their hands and beautiful crowns on their heads, Then I said of her who was old in adulteries, now they will play the prostitute with her and she with them. They went into her and they go go into a, excuse me, they went into her as they go into a prostitute. So they went in to Ohal and to Ohaliba, these, the lewd women. Righteous men will judge them with the with the judgment of adulteresses and with the judgment of women who shed blood because they are adulteresses and it is in their hands for the lord yahweh says i will bring a mob against against them and will give them to be tossed back and forth and robbed the company will stone them with stones and dispatch them with their swords They will kill their sons and their daughters and burn up their houses with fire. Thus I will cause lewdness to cease out of the land. Then all women might be taught not to be lewd like you. They will recompense your lewdness on you, and you will will bear the sins of your idols. Then you will know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Ezekiel chapter 24. Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, write the name of the day, this same day. The king of Babylon drew close to Jerusalem this same day. Utter a parable to the rebellious house and tell them, The Lord Yahweh says, Put the cauldron on the fire, put it on, and also pour water into it. Gather its pieces into it, even every good piece, the thigh, the shoulder. Fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock and also a pile of wood for the bones under the cauldron. Make it boil well. Yes, let its bones be boiled within it. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the bloody city, to the cauldron whose rust is in it and whose rust hasn't gone out of it take out of it take out of it piece after piece without casting lots for it for the blood she shed is in the middle of her she set it on 
the bare rock, she didn't pour it on the ground to cover it with dust, that it may, that it may cause wrath to come up to take vengeance. I have set her blood on the bare rock, that it should not be covered. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the bloody city! I also will make the pile great. Heap on the wood, make the fire hot, boil the meat well, make the broth thick, let the bones be burned. Then set it empty on its coals, that it may be hot, and its bronze may burn, and that its filthiness may be molted in it, that its rust may be consumed. She is weary with toil. Yet her great rust, rust by fire, doesn't leave her. In your filthiness is lewdness. Because I have cleansed you and you weren't cleansed, you won't be cleansed from your filthiness anymore until I have caused my wrath towards you to rest. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. I will, it will happen and I will do it. I won't go back. I won't spare. I won't repent. According to your ways and according to your doings, they will judge you, says the Lord Yahweh. Also, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of behold, I will take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke. Yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, neither shall your tears run down. Sigh, but not aloud. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your headdress on you and put on and put your sandals on your feet. Don't cover your lips, and don't eat mourner's bread. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and at evening my wife died. So I did in the morning as I was commanded. The people asked me, Won't you tell us what these things mean to us, that you act like this? Then I said to them, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Speak to the house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the pride of your power, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pities, and your sons and your daughters, whom you have left behind, will fall by the sword. You will do as I have done. You won't cover your lips or eat mourner's bread. Your turbans will be on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You won't mourn or weep, but you will pine away in your iniquities and moan one toward another. Thus, Ezekiel will be a sign to you. According to all that he has done, you will do. When this comes, then you will know that I am the Lord. You, son of man, shouldn't it Shouldn't it be in the day when I take from their strength the the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their, their sons and their daughters, that in that day he who escapes will come to you to cause you to hear it with your, with your ears. In that day your mouth will be open to him who has escaped, and you will speak and be no more mute. So you will be assigned to them. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. All right, so that that uh, concludes our reading for tonight. That's Ezekiel chapters 21 to 24. Amazing. Some of the things I'll just say here just before I get into the live chat. You notice how it's always like God is, I know this sounds super simple, but it's really not because it's actually very complex because it gets into the whole thing about free will versus predestination, all that kind of thing. But God is in control. God is in control. And he, like he's always on the throne. Okay, so it's it's just amazing to see. It's like sometimes he sets things up so that Um, I mean, he can set the circumstances in anyone's life so that things will happen either for the, for the best of them or for the worst 
um, you know, it doesn't matter. And also, uh, as I read this, I think so much about how there's so much symbolic, you know, uh, like um, all of these visions, all of these visions that these prophets have and in these visions that we're reading here just tonight, it is so uh, symbolic. It's not, you know, literal, but it's symbolic. It's, it's, it's amazing. Okay, so let me see what we have here in the in the live chat. Vinny says, yes. Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at that, that whole context, right? In, in the Gospels, just before that, just before that happened, in the chapter before that, I mean, we know that like the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, were like all the biblical books, actually, none of them were originally written with chapters and verses. The chapters and verses were added later by other people. So it actually flowed really, really well. Let's say, for example, chapter, I think it's chapter 16 of Matthew, where at the end of at the end of chapter 16, where uh, Jesus says, you know, there'll be some of, some of you here that will not taste death before you see the kingdom of God coming in power. And then the very next chapter, like just like, but the very next verse, or a couple of verses after that, and then we got the story of the Mount, Mount of Transfiguration. And so to think about how that was all, it was originally written as one whole story. Like that was all, it wasn't like two different chapters. And we see that so often. I love it. I love that. I love the story of the Mount, the Mount of Transfiguration for sure. Alan says, James 5, 5, they have fattened themselves for the day of slaughter. Oh, to be a skinny cow on the day of slaughter. Okay, let me see here. James 5, 5, you have lived in pleasure on earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Yep. Pamela, welcome, Pamela. Do you have uh, Pamela's question? Do you have Joshua on your uh, on your playlist? Can't see him. No, I, I I don't think I do. I don't think I do. Finished the Bible again last night, and I and I always start again with Joshua. Third time in one point five years. Wow, awesome! That's quite an accomplishment. And yeah, uh, thank you for bringing that to my attention. There's just so much going on. It's, it's like so it's difficult to, uh, yeah, I like to organize things and playlists like that. So yes, I will look into that uh, very soon. The next, well, hopefully within within 24 hours anyway, I'll look into that and look into the uh, Joshua playlist. Thank you for letting me know that, Pamela. Yeah, Jamie says, uh, speaking of um, Matthew chapter 16, there were there are some standing here who uh, shall not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming with power. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's what they saw on the Mount of Transfiguration, for sure.
I'm going to ask the question, how long was the Joshua teaching? I'll have to actually look at it myself. I, um, yeah, let me just check it out here. Assuming that you're speaking about the whole book of Joshua. I'll have to go back. I'm just checking it out. Okay. Okay. Let me just see here. Joshua. It was, I did one, two, three. Uh, let me just double check this. Four. I did one, two, three, four live streams on Joshua. Um, actually, let's, let me just see here. All right. Um, you know, I just created, I just did the playlist right now. So there is a playlist available uh, right now on my channel, Joshua Playlist. Uh, if you're, if you're referring to, so Pamela asked the question, what year was it? It was just, uh, I just had it up here. It wasn't, wasn't long ago. Um, it was, uh, let me see here, just a few months ago. Just give me a second. Back in March, it was March um, beginning, the beginning of March, the first week of March. Yeah, first week of March. All right. Tower Time says, praise Yahweh for this great fellowship with all these truth-seeking brothers and sisters and our awesome host, Brother Christopher. Stay blessed, y'all. Thank you very much, uh, the Tower Time. Be blessed. Multiplied blessings black, back to you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Laura asked a question. Who is that guy that died recently as long as he died in the Lord? I could possibly meet him. Not promising, but they are allowed to help me. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure who you, what you're referring to, uh, Laura. Pamela says, nice. We'll look for the list. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for, for uh, letting me know that. Yeah, it should be, it should be on the, the channel right now on your pl uh, playlist. Okay. So, um, all right. So I'm on the bottom of the, uh, live chat here. So I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. As always, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for your questions and your comments and for, uh, for your fellowship. You guys are awesome as always. 
You are world changers. Keep on pressing in. Keep on seeking him. You know, keep on uh, calling unto him. As I used to always say, I call unto him and he will show you great and mighty things. So thanks again, guys. You guys are awesome. Laura says, good night. Goodbye. See you later. See you sooner or later. Blessings, Laura. Shalom. Yeah, Tower of Time says, not supposed to try to conjure up those that were passed from this life like King Saul did, if that's what you mean, Laura. Um, look at that story up. Yeah, not supposed to speak with the dead. Yep. Father, or Pamela's, Pamela says, the father, Alan, thank you, brother. Much love and blessings to you all. Thank you very much, Alan. Much love and blessings multiplied back to you as well, brother, as always. Okay, guys. So tomorrow, tomorrow, Lord willing, let's see what we got. Uh, we will we will go through Ezekiel chapter 25 through 30. So plugging on, uh, plugging through the uh, book of, e of Ezekiel. Um, we're looking at, uh, for those of you who are wondering about our uh, talk about special guests, we did have Onia tentatively uh, booked for uh, July 9th. That would be on Saturday during our Shabbat fellowship to come and uh, share with us his his version of the of, of the book of Esther. However, he's he. Uh, is not going to be with us on the 9th, but rather the week after that, the 16th, Lord willing. Okay, so that'll be July 16th. Um, and that'll be for our Shabbat fellowship, which is usually, or always, I should say, 2 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so again, thank you guys. Blessings multiplied to you. And um, as always, Pray that uh, everything that we shared here tonight would, was a great blessing to you, and um, and uh, just another uh, another step towards you know a, a deeper walk with God. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys. So I'll see you again tomorrow night, Lord willing. As always, I pray for each and every one of you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face to shine about you upon you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you wonderful, wonderful shalom. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow.